Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington from Learn Your Land. I was driving on the highway yesterday and I came across a billboard. It was a large ad taken out by a grocery store chain here in Pennsylvania. And if you're familiar with this area, then you probably know which grocery store I'm talking about. And on this billboard were just two large words. That's it, two words. Free antibiotics. That's it, free antibiotics. And I'm kind of wondering if you're laughing right now because honestly, my first impression was to literally laugh out loud. I thought this was so funny, so interesting, so fascinating that this grocery store's marketing strategy, at least on this particular stretch of the highway, was to entice customers into its store by throwing free antibiotics at them. Not free salad greens, not free root vegetables, not free organic grass-fed meats, not free raisins, but free antibiotics. And this might seem innocent enough. Yes, I'm very aware that antibiotics form a foundational component of modern medicine, especially modern emergency medicine. I'm aware that throughout history, antibiotics have been responsible for the prevention of numerous deaths. However, I'm also very familiar with the ramifications of the overuse, the misuse, and the abuse of antibiotics, which is also known as antibiotic resistance, one of the greatest threats to our health today. This is something that decades ago, Alexander Fleming warned against in his Nobel Prize acceptance speech. He's the one who discovered and popularized penicillin. He warned against the future of antibiotic resistance. Well, my friends, the future is today. In fact, it's been going on for quite some time. You know, according to the CDC, at least two million illnesses per year here in the United States are due to antibiotic resistance. And what's even more startling is that 23,000 deaths per year here in the United States are due to antibiotic resistance. And you might be saying, well, I don't really use antibiotics that much. I only use them when necessary. However, if you are consuming tap water on a daily basis, if you live in an urban environment or suburban environment, there are antibiotics in your tap water. And what's even worse is that research is showing, new research is showing that antibiotics in the water combined with the chlorine, another antibiotic in the water, to form new compounds that display stronger antibiotic properties than the original antibiotic and the chlorine itself. And this is in our drinking water. If we're eating livestock that have been fed heavy doses of antibiotics, we're getting antibiotics. If we take antibiotics from a doctor just for general conditions, health conditions that we're experiencing, then we're getting heavy doses of antibiotics. And this can lead to huge problems, not only for our bodies, but for the health of the environment, the health of the entire global population as well. So what the heck is the solution here? I have a solution, however mild it may be. And if you've been watching my videos, no surprise, it involves hanging out in the wild. You know, nature does not have a PR agent. Though if it did have a PR agent, I imagine that if it worked to create a billboard with its PR agent, that the billboard might say something like this. As a gift to help you along your journey, I offer to you countless plant and mushroom species for free that demonstrate powerful antibacterial properties that do not lead to antibiotic resistance. Use them wisely, enjoy. In this video, what I'd like to do for you is share with you at least one particular plant species out of countless plant species that has demonstrated powerful antibacterial properties in numerous studies. And it is my hope that by watching this video, you become familiar with what antibiotic resistance is and you learn some viable and very safe solutions to this pressing problem. Now, it may come as a surprise to many of you to learn that this particular plant has any importance in the wild beyond choking native plants. And this particular plant is Japanese barberry, or Berberis thunbergii. It's a deciduous spiny shrub characterized by having numerous red fruits this time of year, fruits that are longer than they are wide. And they're bright red. You really can't miss it if you're walking through the trails in Pennsylvania or throughout the woodlands in the northeastern United States. These fruits are edible, though they're kind of bitter, so you don't want to eat a whole bowl full of them, though I like to eat them as a trail nibble. In the springtime, the leaves are edible, though this time of year they're much too fibrous and they've probably already fallen off. And this shrub grows to be about one and a half meters tall. Now, Japanese barberry has been shown in numerous studies to demonstrate potent antibacterial properties. And one study in particular showed that root extracts, ethanolic extracts from the roots, demonstrated potent antibacterial properties against five different strains of bacteria, including Staphylococcus aureus, which is responsible for skin infections, and Streptococcus pyogenes, which is responsible for strep throat. So they are ethanolic extracts or alcohol extracts of the roots. 
You can make your very own Japanese barberry medicine at home by digging up these roots in the fall, in the springtime, bringing them home, drying them out, crushing them up, and then steeping them in alcohol for two to six weeks and then straining that out. And you will have your very own Japanese barberry medicine. Now, if I had a strep throat infection that was due to Streptococcus pyogenes or Staphylococcus aureus infection, I might consider looking into Japanese barberry root extracts for myself. I'm not recommending you do it, I'm not recommending anybody else do it except myself. However, use your best judgment, do your own research and see what works best for you. Now this study found that other plants demonstrated similar antibacterial properties against Staphylococcus aureus and against Streptococcus pyogenes. And this was European barberry, which is Berberis vulgaris, and also golden seal, which is Hydrasis canadensis. And the researchers attributed these properties to berberine, which is a yellow pigmented alkaloid found in these plants. Berberine has been shown in numerous studies to not only demonstrate antibacterial properties, but anti-inflammatory properties, antioxidant properties, anti-cancerous properties, and more. So if you're looking to make your own potent antibacterial medicine at home, consider looking into Japanese barberry. Unless you absolutely need golden seal, I would consider looking into the barberries just because golden seal is a threatened species here in Pennsylvania and probably throughout the Northeastern United States. But Japanese barberry is very common and it can be very effective as well. So if you're looking to make your own antibacterial medicine, look into making ethanolic or alcoholic extracts from Japanese barberry. Of course, we're only scratching the surface in this video, and I could have mentioned numerous other studies. For example, I recently released a video on the oyster mushroom, the common oyster mushroom, Pleurotus ostriatus, that mushroom that many of us just walk by whenever we're taking our daily walk in the woods. This mushroom, a hot water extract from it, has demonstrated antibacterial properties against Staphylococcus aureus and against E. coli. And remember, I am acknowledging the importance of synthetic antibiotics, especially in modern emergency medicine. However, with the threat of antibiotic resistance just getting stronger and stronger and stronger, it's absolutely essential that we start to implement other strategies in healing. And within nature lie several solutions. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to me. If you could do two things for me, I'd greatly appreciate it. Number one, if you could join the community at learnyourland.com and sign up with your email address so that we could stay in touch with each other. And number two, if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting subscribe down below, that would be great as well. Thanks again for watching this video. Really appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.